Oh my word, would you look at this? What happened to 2022? It is nearly that time of year when uh, Mr Holder steps up to the microphone and announces in his cheese grating accent way the festive season is upon us. But before we don the Santa hats and, uh, and head long into all the swaddling and the party season, I think it's time to have a quick reflection on what we've been up to over the autumn. And uh, I'm a trustee of the Radio Academy. The Radio Academy is doing some really good work at the moment, and not least laying on the annual uh, festival, radio festival for the radio industry. So uh, on Don's Diary this week, I want to look back to where we were in September. It was a fantastic festival, loads of people there, and uh, I've got some great conversations, and that is what we're going to have on Don's Diary this week. I'm here at the Radio Festival, radio.co is uh, one of the supporters of the Radio Festival, and I'm joined by James. This is your company, isn't it? This is my company, yes, Dom. And uh, tell me how it got going and what it's all about. So I've always been a passionate uh, fan of radio. I've always been very interested in radio, and um, when I was younger, I set up a business selling streaming services to the radio station. And then about eight years ago, we thought, there's got to be an easier way of doing this, because at the time, to get your radio station online was quite complicated, lots of software and... And to start a radio station, you know, you need to go out and spend a lot of money on building a big fancy studio. And we thought, well, wouldn't it be great if we could do something that did everything from the cloud and you could control it all through your browser? And that's how Radio.co was born. Um, so we, we spent about probably a year and a half, two years developing the platform. We launched in 2015, which I can't believe was seven years ago now. Um, and over the sort of past seven years, we've, we've had tens of thousands of broadcasters use our platform for all kinds of things, traditional radio stations, but also... Lots of brands, uh, events have used us, and um, yeah, just a real interesting mix of, of, of businesses and individuals uh, who want to broadcast audio over the internet. So, to my mind, that's really quite entrepreneurial because I'm not sure it was entirely obvious uh, at your inception stage yeah. that this would be a, a direction for the industry uh, to go in. I'm very fixed with empowering people yeah. with the skills to make radio. What it seems to me is you're doing is empowering uh, organizations to be a radio station? A little bit of both. I think we've got um, lots of individuals who use our platform and use our services too. Um, and also, as I say, we've got um, community radio stations, sort of conventional radio stations, and then, you know, lots of organizations. So we've got, for example, uh, music festivals and bars who use our services to broadcast and create a radio station as a kind of an extension of their brands. Why is it important for you to be at the annual sort of industry event such yeah. as the radio festival? I think events like this are always interesting because you get to meet interesting people. I think you get to learn lots of things and um, network and, and sort of observe what other people are doing and keep up with trends in the industry, which I think is really important, especially, you know, if you're, for us as a business, you know, we like to think of ourselves, or hopefully we are, pioneering and, and forward thinking. And, um, you know, it's very easy, especially when you're running a tech company, to kind of get, like, left behind because technology is always evolving. So industry events are a great way of, of kind of, of thinking of what, what comes next and what, what are people looking at doing. And one of the things that's become really obvious talking to a lot of people here, when you mentioned, you know, a few years ago when it's inception, Radio.co is quite kind of unique. Lots of radio stations now um, are broadcasting, you know, from multiple locations. They don't necessarily need a fixed, you know, studio or a, a building anymore. They'll have presenters who are ch doing shows from home. And our platform has always empowered people to do that. And it's kind of... It's useful seeing that that kind of the industry, that's the way the industry is going as a whole. One of the things, and you'd expect the chair of the Community Media Association to say this, uh, we're fixed with empowering communities, whether that's communities of geographic location or communities of uh, interest. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to ask you, you know, who your favourite client is, but I wonder if you have a story um, of one of your clients and one of your stations that is all about empowering communities. <laughs> I'm trying to think of which example to use now. Um, I think uh, one of the, the biggest clients and uh, great wins for us in the early days actually was we had um, the Global Goals, which is uh, you know, an initiative uh, run by UNICEF. Um, Richard Curtis was organising lots of big name celebrities to produce lots of radio shows. And the interesting thing is they wanted to broadcast this radio station uh, you know, in multiple languages simultaneously. And at the time, this was probably in 2015, 2016, around the time we launched, um, 
they didn't really have a, an, an easy way of doing this. And they had a producer who was working for the BBC and they'd hired him to kind of put this all together. And he was tasked with this problem, how do we get this radio station out in lots of different languages simultaneously to this huge audience? And he really didn't have a clear way of doing it you know, on the limited budget they had at the time. Um, and I think in terms of making a difference and making an impact, I can't remember the exact statistic now, we'll have to find it on our website, but it reached tens of millions of people, this, this broadcast, and it was, that was one of those projects where I was like, wow, we're really onto something here. And actually we've got a great way of using radio to make a difference in empowering communities. And we've had you know, various other sort of not-for-profits and charities use us since then to do all sorts of interesting things as well. Well, good luck, James. It's a great sounding company. We'll watch it with interest. You're clearly growing. There's clearly a need for you, which, you know, from uh, someone with the passion for the radio industry, that is in itself good news. But for the moment, many thanks for talking to Dom's diary. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dom. Nice to meet you. Gotta love it when the unexpected happens. This magic moment in the conference is when Stephanie Hurst's session came to this unexpected conclusion with everybody spontaneously erupting in a full-on dance. Huge fun, definitely to be encouraged. More Radio Festival 2022 conversations. One of the things the Radio Academy does is make sure that people can get here who might otherwise not be able to come. And that's through our bursary scheme. And uh, somebody who's here today is Archie, who's here uh, on a bursary. Tell us all about it. Yes, yeah, so I don't live in London. I used to, but don't anymore. Um, and I want to, at my utmost, stay affiliated with the Radio Academy. So it's really helped me to get here today from uh, the Midlands. So trains and everything else is going uh, up in price. So it's really benefited me. Fantastic to be here. And yeah, I'm really grateful to the Radio Academy and the bursary for getting me here today. Uh, that's great, and thanks for saying so. Good to have you here today. Um, what are your aspirations? What are you hoping to uh, achieve in the audio and radio industry? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I would love to be presenting a breakfast show. I think that's kind of a, a real aim for me and a real aspiration. Um, that's obviously quite a tricky road, and uh, there's a lot of stars in that field, but that's my drive, that's my motivator, not discounting sort of drive, evening, overnight, anything like that, but breakfast um, presenter would be the goal for me. So the desire to do something and the drive to make it happen mm. is, is, is pretty well the whole thing. You will get there, the journey won't be quite as you expect. Mm. Where do you see the opportunities in the current landscape of audio and radio for presenting, for instance, a breakfast show? Yeah, I think opportunities like this, quite frankly, are one of the best ways to connect with people. I think personally, you know, uh, technology is great, but you can't beat face to face. You can't be looking someone in the eye and, and telling them about your passions and your aspirations. So first and foremost, I think this is a great event to do that and long may it continue. And I know it will with, um, you know, events such as the BB at the BBC tomorrow through the Radio Academy. So I think that's... Which is foot in the door, we exactly. should say. It's, it's a long-standing event exactly. to help upcoming and emerging creative talent. Exactly. And so that's that. And I think secondly, just... Um, Thankfully, the networking social media sites that are, are quite prevalent, as they, they all are, um, you know, LinkedIn, etc. Those are great ways to, you know, not face to face meet people, but then hopefully meet them in the near future. So I think those two are paramount. So networking is everything. You're absolutely mm. right about that. But there's also no substitutes for just doing it. There are volunteer orientated exactly. sectors. So what are you doing to kind of get your skill set and your confidence up? Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm still. Um, you know, I'm actually an aspiring singer as well, so I'm actually, you know, um, training the voice in that way. But um, yeah, for, for me, it's just about creating uh, content that's exciting and engaging, so that therefore leading to a podcast for myself that I aim to put out soon. And um, just basically any opportunity I get, I'm actually moving abroad, but nonetheless, I'm going to try and work within a radio capacity as much as I can. And as you alluded to, like getting hours behind the mic, meeting creative people such as like today, those ways for me, how I'm going to develop in my career. Your audience awaits you, a little burst of my way? Um, yes, we can do that. I did it my way. There you go. I hope in 30 years' time we'll be having this conversation and it'll prove to be the case. Thank you so much for talking to Dom's Diary. Thank you so much, Dom. Thank you. More radio festival conversations. Uh, we're now at the uh, social after the uh, main presentations of the day. Lots of pizza, lots of drinks going down. I'm joined by uh, Alexandra, yes. and uh, you're one of the guests of the Academy today. Yes. Tell us how that came about. 
Oh, well, I was lucky enough to be awarded a bursary. I uh, met Sam Bailey at the podcast show, gosh, a few months now, became aware of what the Radio Academy does and their work and just became really inspired. So yeah, applied, I was lucky enough to be here and it's been a wonderful day, it really has. So you got a bursary, what difference did that make to your ability to come and enjoy today? Yeah, well, I'm based in Edinburgh, so it's a bit of a travel, a bit of a, bit of a commute, a bit of a stay, a bit of a proper trip to London. So, and, and of course, London is still, whilst there's a lot going on in Scotland, London is still a hub for what's going on in, in audio in, in the UK. So it just meant that I could be here and be amongst the people who are leading this sector, which has been a yeah, wonderful. Is the correct answer for my slightly leading question there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's find out a little bit about you. What, uh, yeah. what, what, what's tugging your boat in audio and radio at the moment? Yeah, so I present a podcast called Independent Thinking, which explores the evolution of the high street and celebrates independent retail. So it came about during lockdown when I was just really inspired by the temerity and the passion of independent retailers. and. It's just kind of grown into evolve into where the high street's going. It's been such a change in the past couple of years. And what are we gonna do with the department stores? What are we gonna do about kind of chain stores crashing and falling around us? The cost of living crisis. It's all kind of really hitting Britain's really hard. So that's what I'm really passionate about and the story's really important to me. And how's it going in terms of building an audience, building your product? Where, where, where are you on that journey? Honestly? <laughs> uh, let's, let's, let's go with honestly. Yeah, I think it's been a challenge. I think I think during lockdown there was a really, literally a captive audience. We couldn't leave and it grew really quite quickly, particularly amongst business owners and like locally in Scotland. And I think now that we can open up and particularly with the changes to social media, I think it's it's more difficult, I think, to, to get audience, to get, bring in the audiences. And I think particularly the move is so clear now the move towards video kind of, um, audio visual working together now in podcasting so yeah i think it's it's going to become a more challenging space but i it grows month on month which i i love yeah and have you taken anything away from today there's been a lot of talk about podcasts of course yeah yeah i think be more fearless and i think the beauty of podcasting is that i mean i edit i i executive produce myself so i feel like it's about a place to just experiment and and try new things and don't particularly around the use of different types of audio and just get creative uh, which yeah i'm going to try my best and implement and that's great and picking up on a conversation we had earlier on in the day yeah. it's about just doing it and putting the time in getting that experience building that confidence building those skills and then your voice will come naturally won't it yeah well this is it this is it i think you have to kind of find it almost and i think you know you, I think you think you know what you're going to sound like and until actually you're in that moment or uh, particularly who you speak to or I think you can it's all about really relational things and how you can relate to other people and how that changes and things but I think yeah I look forward to kind of how I evolve my, how my voice evolves as I, <laughs> as I start working in this industry well just talking to you now I think you've made a, a great start on that <laughs> journey and, uh, and and I want to follow it do keep in touch with me uh, thank you a pleasure to meet you thank uh, you uh, lovely to meet you and I, I'm in Edinburgh a lot so we'll, we'll oh, pal up there we'll go it. for a drink that's it absolutely <laughs> to show you all around town excellent good <laughs> thank you very much a pleasure <laughs> Nick you are the vice chair of the Radio Academy, and uh, we're at the sort of uh, closing section. Uh, well, actually, the party's just getting party's going, and there. you're clearly uh, participating after a long uh, day. Uh, this is Radio Festival 2022. Has it gone from the Academy's point of view? Oh, I mean, it's been fantastic. I mean, just thinking back, you know, we've had two years where we've had to do it through a screen. When you think about it, what we did in 2020, where we did it from everyone's home it was directed from someone's home it was engineered from someone's home that was quite that was a very buzzy experience then last year in the news uk building but still people watching at home but this to see everyone together again to see everyone networking to see real people who have height and 3d on a stage engaging audiences not one stage but three stages it's just fantastic it's so good to be back and one of the values of a meeting event as opposed to an online uh, or even a hybrid is exactly what we're hearing and seeing here, which is people meeting their friends or, or new, making new friends and uh, talking their points and, and, and being that kind of cross-sector uh, interest. And, um, and I, for me, that's one of the things that the Radio Academy uh, does best. 
Oh yeah, without a doubt. I mean, our job as the Radio Academy is to is to share um, good practice, is to provide opportunity for people working in all the different sectors of audio, an opportunity to get together. And there'll be people here who I know, and I've been talking to people today who I've I met at an event, another Radio Academy event, but not really got to know them, and they're really really engaging and I've met people today I've not really spoken to before and it's so good to see new people coming through and if these events give new people an opportunity to come and see what the Academy's about and then find out so much more about what we do it's got to be a good thing. Well now I'm a trustee so we work together <laughs> yeah. on the board but I, I want to take this opportunity of asking you as the vice chair and in, the, in our leadership team uh, kind of where the Academy is and where it's going because I know <coughs> from that inside information, yeah. what a journey it's been on, but we're really getting out there. There's lots of training and event, events and engagement events going on. What's your view on this? Well, my view is, as I as sort of sort of alluded to just then, is the, the purpose of the Academy is to share good practice yeah. and to bring new people into this amazing world in which we're all luckily, very lucky to be part of. And I just felt for quite a long time, for various reasons or whatever, and let's face it, in charities there's always difficult times and we're lucky at the moment we're going well but it's our job to make sure there's so many opportunities for people so for me big events like this and the arias they are our sort of they are our kind of beacon moments but just as important are those moments of training days of of our mentoring program because they're going to provide us with the future of our world and that has got to be the most important thing. The mentoring programme was uh, talked about by Helen, our, yeah. our chair, earlier, and, uh, and that is uh, about to make a return. Do you want to quickly describe what it's all about? Yeah, I mean, it's a professional mentoring programme, and it takes those who are not just entering, but those who have sort of roles within the, in, within the industry, and it pairs them with someone higher up in the industry, and it's a chance to exchange thoughts and learn from from those those men mentees mentors I can never remember the right one. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess but, possibly people are learning from each other. Well, to be honest, from what I've heard from some of those yeah. who were doing the mentoring last yeah, year, yeah. they came out going, I didn't think of that, yeah, yeah. and that's enriched them. So you know the, the, that program, you know, it's it because it's it's very new, it's still annual and it's still limited by numbers. But there's a, you know, we do it. We have someone who comes in and runs it for us. It's funded properly. And, you know, I hear nothing but good things from those who came. You know, I went to the presentations mm -hmm. yeah. at the end of it uh, a couple of months ago, and I spoke to some of those who were mentored, and they said how invaluable it was. And to me, that's what it's all about, because we're helping the next generation. Well, exactly. And one of the things that we're doing at the Academy, uh, in, as part of that kind of uh, inclusive engagement, is uh, offering bursaries. Yep. And uh, we met a few of them today, and I'm really pleased to be here. Uh, one of them uh, we're, is Archie, who's holding the camera right now. We're, we're making him work for his... Yes, uh, exactly. Bursary, first and I think we ought to let him relax his he arms. He so, to go and get one of these. Exactly. Nick, great pleasure as always. Thanks, Thank you. Cheers. Lovely. Good. A great Thank hearing you. from Nick there to round up all those conversations. And I love talking to the people who came to the event uh, on bursaries. Uh, well, that is all said and done. I if you want to know more about some of the great initiatives we're talking about in there, do head to radioacademy.org. All the details there about the mentoring scheme, the ramp scheme. Uh, in the meantime, yeah, we've got there, haven't we? Ah, <laughs> oh, really? Okay.